welcome to this section of Psych 101, Elements of Psychology. My name is Dr. Paul Naduku. Today we'll be looking at the fields of psychology, the fields of psychology. Just like any discipline, if you talk about business, there are various specialties in business. You know, HR, accounting, finance, banking and insurance, and a whole lot. The same way psychology is not just one you know, field. There are different sub-fields within it. And so there are psychologists who work primarily as researchers, others who work primarily as practitioners, and others that combine the two. So psychologists specialize in a host of different areas within the field and identify themselves by many different labels. So this lecture is just to give you an idea of the various subdivisions within psychology. So at the end, it is my hope that you'll be able to distinguish between research and applied fields of psychology. We basically have two broad areas, basic and applied psychology. You'll be able to explain the major basic areas as well as the major applied areas. And then also you also appreciate the current state of psychological practice in Ghana and then also how one can become a, ch a chartered psychologist in Ghana and perhaps compare that to what happens in other developed countries. So let's look at the fields of psychology. Yes, it is true that all psychologists study human behavior and mental processes. However, they pursue this study in different ways from different settings and from different perspectives. And this is what gave rise to the different fields of psychology. Some of them engages in research and teaching, whilst others provide psychological services to individuals that are challenged. So we basically have two broad fields in psychology, basic and applied. The basic fields are concerned with doing research to increase knowledge and understanding of psychological phenomena. So that is what you mean by the basic field. They are concerned with research, purely research, in order to generate knowledge and for us to understand psychological issues better. Then once this knowledge has been generated, then the applied field will use this knowledge or these psychological principles and theories to help others to overcome challenges in life. So that is the applied aspect. They will use this knowledge that has been generated to help others to you know, improve upon their lives. So there are several of those that are involved in the applied field. We have clinical psychology, we have counseling psychology, industrial and organizational psychology, occupational health psychology, forensic psychology, engineering psychology, educational psychology, community psychology, health psychology, and several others. Psychology is one of the very fa the fastest you know, growing disciplines. You know, as at last year, the American Psychological Society has registered, I think, 56 various subdivisions within psychology. They call them chapters, so they have about 56 various chapters. So today we'll look at the various fields and see what really they are involved with. We'll look at clinical psychology. What do clinical psychologists do? Clinical psychologists basically uses psychological techniques to assess and treat persons with mental disorders. So that is what they do. They, you know, treat people who have psychological disorders, depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, and several other psychological issues. They diagnose, assess, and treat people of these psychological disorders. Let me make a very quick distinction between a clinical psychologist and a psychiatrist. Clinical psychologist is somebody who has all the training in psychology. So they use psychological principles to treat people with psychological disorders. A psychiatrist, however, is a person who first trained as a medical doctor and has come for specialized training in psychological 
issues. So there is a, a very big difference there. Clinical psychologists uh, have all their training in psychology. Psychiatrists are first medical doctors that have come for specialty in psychology. So psych clinical psychologists who only use psychological principles and theories to treat people with psychological diseases or disorders, whilst a psychiatrist sometimes may use medicine to treat people with psychological issues because of their background training in medicine. The next field we look at is counseling psychology. And counseling psychology, they focus on helping people with adjustment challenges or adjustment problems. They provide advice for college students on adjustment choice of subjects, vocational decisions, and several others, uh, depending on where they find themselves and the kind of you know, the activities that they will be engaged with. If you look at this university, the counseling center will basically be handling student issues, you know, how to plan well and study so well, which career choice to make, and a whole lot. Whilst a counseling psychologist that is attached to a church may be dealing more with marital issues and relationship problems. In the same way, a counseling psychologist attached to an organization will be dealing in different things. But basically what they do is that they advise people that have challenges and they guide you to make the choice. They will not make the final decision for you or the choice for you. They will just guide you, tell you what the pros and the cons are, and then assist you to make the best choice for yourself. And then we have school psychology. They work in the school settings where they help children with academic, emotional, and behavioral problems. So that is what they do. They are most often we find them in the school settings and they are concerned with assisting with learning and teaching issues so that students will be able to be well adjusted and move on with their academic life. Closely related to school psychologists is educational psychologists. And what educational psychologists do is that they apply the principles of psychology in the classroom. They develop tests that measure intellectual ability or academic potential. They help teachers enhance teaching methods and learning processes, motivation in the classroom and things like that. Basically, educational psychologists, most of the time, we don't find them in the, the schools. We find them in the education offices. They are concerned with curriculum development. How at this age, you know, what should children be learning at this age? Are their mind well developed to understand these concepts? what method can be used to teach them these concepts very well, looking at their age and their intellectual development. So they are more concerned about that curriculum development. And then we have developmental psychology. This subdiscipline is concerned with human development, the changes that takes place in us right from conception to the end of life, the social changes that takes place, the changes in our physique, you know, changes in our cognition and all that, they are specialized in this area. And now we have various subdivisions in this. We have people that are specialized in only childhood development, others specialized in only adolescent issues, and others are only looking at adulthood. So various subdivisions that are there. And then we have personality psychology, and this deals with how people differ from one another in their individual traits, how we differ from one another, how it deals with our uniqueness, how people develop their personality, whether they come to change or not, how does one become a leader, and issues about individual uniqueness is the area for personality psychology. And then we, have, we also have social psychology that deals with how our behaviors and attitudes are influenced by others and how our behaviors and attitude also influence others. So issues of aggression, you know, will be an area for social psychologists. Conformity, friendship, attraction, leadership, prejudice, love, and issues like that are areas that social psychologists are concerned with. And then we also have environmental psychologists. They look at the interplay or the relationship between the physical environment and human behavior. You know, 
there is a very strong relationship between the environment where we find ourselves and sometimes the, the behaviors that we, we exhibit. I always say that sometimes there are certain places that when you happen to be passing through and you've taken in a pure water, you never be tempted to throw the, the rubber on the floor. Whilst there are others, when you find yourself there, you don't feel anything, you just throw it around. So they look at how the built environment influences human behavior. Every classroom arrangement, how best it can influence interaction and things like that. And sometimes we, we see this so clearly. The churches that have high platforms and things like that, the relationship between those who sit on the platform and those who sit down is, is, is so interesting. So that is what environmental psychologists look at. And then we have experimental psychology. They apply the experimental method to the study of behavior and mental processes. So they look at issues of learning, sensation, perception, and so on and so forth. Let me say clearly here that other psychologists also use the experimental method. Anybody can use it, but there are people that are concerned more with experiment, most of the time found in the lab. And then we have industrial and organizational psychology, or simply what we call I.O. psychology. They study behavior, human behavior at the workplace. Their focus is on how to increase productivity, issues about job satisfaction, how they'll be able to decrease absenteeism among employees and things like that. So that basically is concerned with psychology at the workplace, issues about training of employees and personnel selection, job attitudes, you know, just one single vacancy to be filled. So many people have applied, thousands. How do you pick the best one? Do you all have the minimum qualification? How do you pick the best one? These are issues that industrial and organizational psychologists deals in so much well. Then we have consumer psychology. They focus on consumer behavior. What factors influence people to buy or not to buy a particular product? So they look at the influence of advert on consumers, packaging, the type of music that is involved in the various commercials that we run, and that how that influences people's behavior to buy or not to buy a particular product. And then we have biological psychology, which focuses on the biological processes that underline our behavior. How heredity, how our hormones you know, influence our level of depression, and anxiety and things like that, how the brain functions to influence our behavior are issues that you know, biological psychology looks at. And then we also have cognitive psychology, which focuses on the mental processes, how we make decisions, how we solve problems, issues about perception, language, and memory. How come some people forget things so quickly and others do not? How do we explain that? that is an issue for cognitive psychology. And then we have community psychology, which focuses on improving community mental health. They emphasize prevention of social and community problems, works with communities rather than individuals. And their aim is to prevent you know, community issues. Maybe there's a teenage pregnancy in a particular township. They can get in, work with the community to overcome it. Maybe domestic violence, child abuse, drug use. They go into the community and work with the community to prevent or handle such issues. We also have health psychology, which studies how factors such as stress, lifestyle, and attitudes affairs, affect our health how stress, lifestyle, and attitude affect our health. Now, if you look at most of the diseases that are affecting human beings now are basically lifestyle issues. They are things that have started from early stage. Talk about cancer, you know, diabetes, and HIV AIDS. These are all behavioral issues, lifestyle. And so health psychologists deal with issues like that. They help develop health promotion programs and interventions to improve the quality of life of people. And then cross-cultural psychology, they look at how culture influences our behavior, how culture influences our behavior. Even the way we smile differs from one culture to the other. So we look at how these differences affect our behaviors. And then we have forensic psychology, who deals with criminal behavior 
and the legal system. So basically, they help law enforcement agencies in conducting profile of possible suspects of crime. Sometimes they give expert testimony at the law court. So they work basically with law enforcement agencies. And then we have sports psychology. They work with sports men and sports women, you know, and sports program teams and the rest in order to enhance their performance. So their focus most of the time will be on injury recovery, how you'll be able to assist the sports men and women to recover quickly from an injury, how they can be motivated to enhance their performance and things like that. That is what sports psychologists are concerned with. And sometimes how the fans' behavior also influence the performance of the team or the athletes. These are issues that they are all concerned with. And then, as I said, the field of psychology keeps growing. New fields are coming up. These days, people are specializing in very small, small areas. They want to master a small area very well, rather than trying to hold on to a much broader area. So we have issues, other areas that are coming up, like zero psychology, which is concerned with psychological processes that are associated with aging. They deal with you know, retirement issues, stress issues, and things like that, issues of death and things. They work with basically with the aged, general psychology. And then now there's another field that is developing out of clinical psychology, and that is clinical neuropsychology. They work to evaluate cognitive effects of brain injury, sometimes strokes, and things like that. They help to design programs that aim to help people who have suffered brain damage, they assist them to be able to regain their mental functioning back. So these are new fields that are coming now. If you look at the various fields that we have looked at, the largest of all globally is clinical psychology. Majority of people are into clinical psychology. So that is what we should know. Now let's come to Ghana. How does one become a chartered psychologist? Currently, the Mental Health Act has been passed. The Ghana Psychological Council has been formed. And so there is a law that backs the practice of psychology in Ghana. And the minimum requirement that anybody needs to be licensed to practice as a psychologist is a master's in psychology. You need to have your master's. In other countries, you need to have a doctorate. You need to have a PhD before you can be licensed to, to practice. So that is what we should know. Apart from the um, Ghana Psychological Council, we also have the Ghana Psychological Association that regulates the um, professional life of psychologists that have been registered with them, just as we have the American Psychological Association and then the British Psychological Society. We also have the Ghana Psychological Association, which was formed in 2000, that regulates the practice of Lance's psychologist in Ghana. Thank you.